Hello there and welcome back to my channel. Canva can not only be used to design beautiful slideshows and design resources for your classroom, but it can also be used as an interactive whiteboard. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you the basics for using Canva whiteboard, as well as highlight some of my favorite features. So grab your device and get ready to follow along. We are gonna start with how to access Canva whiteboard. As with most things, you can get there a few different ways. So I'm gonna show you some options and feel free to just pick and choose your favorite. From the Canva homepage, which is just canva.com, under you might wanna try, depending on updates Canva has pushed out, you might see it right there. It says whiteboard, just click, and it's going to open up a blank whiteboard. You can also select whiteboards up here and then you can browse through a bunch of different templates by scrolling down and using the arrow keys to look through them. You can also do a search such as classroom, browse through templates, but put a filter on to only show whiteboards. So under category, select education, resource type, and then choose whiteboards. And that is going to show you all of the whiteboard options. From the Canva homepage, you can also click templates on the left-hand side, and then you can select whiteboard and just browse through all the different whiteboard templates there. And then finally, you can click on create a design up at the top and select whiteboard. It will create a blank whiteboard for you. Keep in mind, even if you start with a blank whiteboard, you will notice over on the left-hand side, you still have the templates option. So you can insert in a template at any time. Now, before we jump into more about the whiteboard specifically, I do want to show you one final way that you can turn a slide into a whiteboard. Let's say I have a slideshow presentation that I was using with my students and in real time, I want to be able to either demonstrate things on the slide or have my students collaborate with me on the slide. With that slideshow presentation open, I can right click on the slide and choose expand to whiteboard and it will actually turn that slide into a big whiteboard. Once I'm done, I can then right click again and collapse the whiteboard. But now let's move on to some of the basic whiteboard features. You might be wondering, how is this different than a slideshow presentation, for example? Whiteboards have infinite space. That means you can scroll and scroll and you can zoom in and you can zoom out and you will have as much space as you possibly need. Whereas other Canva files, such as a slideshow presentation, has a limited size. But the whiteboard also has a lot of the same features as other Canva file types, such as a slideshow. So you can show or hide a timer. And of course you can adjust the length of time. You can start and stop it. You can reset it. You can adjust the audio settings. You can then hide it by clicking timer again. You also have a commenting feature just like you do on slideshows. So let's just insert in a random rectangle. I'm going to recolor it. I can right click and I can choose comment. And from there I can type an example comment. I can insert in emojis, stickers. I can mention people. Once I comment, people can then react to it or reply. Now you may notice on the whiteboard, there is this dotted background. You can actually show or hide that. So if you come up to file, hover over view settings, where it says show dot grid, it's currently checked. If I click it, it's going to hide those dots. I also can choose to snap to dot grid. That just has to do with how your elements are aligned. It's gonna keep things kind of more in order, which might be helpful for you or might not, but I'm gonna go ahead and show the dot grid again. Now let's move on to inserting whiteboard elements. I already showed you that you can insert in shapes just like you can on other Canva files. And a lot of the elements that you add to your Canva whiteboard are exactly the same as when you add them to a slideshow. So if you click on elements, you can see your recently used files. You will see some sticky notes, shapes. You can use AI generated images. You've got various graphics. So these kind of stickers that you can insert in and then be able to recolor, resize, move around as needed graphics, stickers, photos, videos, audio, charts. I mean, 
all of those same things. Of course, you can search them as well, and you can even have access to your own personally uploaded images, videos, and audio files. So for example, I could insert in this multiplication chart, and again, I can resize it and move it around as needed. Now, I'm gonna get rid of some of these extras, so let's get rid of those. You also have the option to enable quick flow. So for example, with this rectangle, if I click on it, right now, quick flow is enabled. Now, if you don't see quick flow enabled, when you click on an element like this, you will see this button. If you click it, it will disable quick flow. Or if you want to enable it, click the three dots and choose enable quick flow. Now that I have enabled quick flow, it's going to allow me to add additional shapes either above, below, to the left or right by clicking this little arrow and it's going to automatically connect them. So notice I have this arrow in between. Now, of course, I can delete it if I want to. I can just click the delete button but I can also recolor it. I can change the thickness. So if I want it to be black or if I want it to change from an arrow to maybe just a dot, I have the ability to do that. Now, quick flow will work not only with shapes like these rectangles, but also with things like sticky notes. So if I go to elements, if I insert in this yellow sticky note, from here with quick flow enabled, I can click on the plus sign to just continue adding more sticky notes. They're not connected, there's no arrow in between, but it's keeping them in a nice row or I can create nice neat columns by clicking those plus signs to add in additional sticky notes. You also have the draw tool. Now this is available in other file types as well, but I feel like it kind of gets neglected. However, it is the perfect tool on a whiteboard. On the left hand side, right in between between projects and uploads, you will see it says draw. If you click on that, you can choose between pen, marker, highlighter, eraser, you can change the color and the thickness. So with this pen, maybe I want it to be green, I can select that. And then let's make our weight like 25. You can also adjust the transparency and then from there you have the ability to draw and write. Also with this, it has a little shape assist tool. So if I draw a circle, it's not gonna be perfect, but before I let go, if I hold my mouse there, it's gonna correct it and make it a nice, pretty circle. Same thing if I draw like a triangle, it's not gonna be perfect, but if I hold my mouse for a few seconds before letting go, it's gonna help me along the way. Another element I do wanna show you is that you can insert in a slide or a page from another Canva file you have created. So if I click on Pro projects. And for example, that factors presentation that I had, if I click on a slide, it's going to insert it onto my whiteboard. Now, all of these elements are editable. It's not going to impact that slide, like that original file will not be edited, but I can insert it onto the whiteboard and then be able to manipulate it and change it however I need. So you could always start with a blank whiteboard and then insert in a slide from class. Maybe students kind of struggled with a certain slide the previous day and you're like, hey, let's have a discussion about it. You can insert that onto a whiteboard and be able to go in and collaborate with students or just record their thoughts on the whiteboard. Speaking of collaborating, let's move on to collaboration and sharing. You wanna share? If you want to use the whiteboard, just you as the teacher, maybe whole group in front of the class, you can, but you can also invite students to collaborate with you on the whiteboard, or students can collaborate together in small groups. Just like you would share a Canva file, like a slideshow, you can invite collaborators on a whiteboard. If you click on share up at the top, you will notice you have access with email. So you can type in their email address. For example, the Emerson's 2020 at gmail.com. You can choose whether you want them to have edit, comment, or view access. So we'll go ahead and select edit. You can add a message if you want to, and then you can click send. But you can also generate a link. So under share, you have this collaboration link. You can click the drop down and choose anyone with the link, be able to copy that link and share it with whoever you want to have access. Now, I went ahead and joined on the Canva whiteboard from my Emerson's account, which 
I don't have a Canva account through my Emerson's email, but you'll notice I was able to join in as a guest. So the collaborators do not have to have Canva accounts in order to join. It's given me just kind of a random like animal symbol name, and that's what I will appear as on the slideshow. But I'm gonna go ahead and click the X. A couple of cool features that I want to point out with the collaboration is the colorful pointers. So I'm just gonna leave my pointer like right here. I'm gonna select this sticky note. If I go back to my pocket full of primary account and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, I can see that the links, which is my Emerson's account, has this selected because I can notice them right here. You also will have colorful cursors. So each person's cursor will be a different color. And as they move it around, you'll be able to see it on the other. Let me actually go ahead and make this like a side by side. That way it's easier to see. Okay, so right now, if I move my mouse on this screen, you'll notice it's moving on the other account. So you can actually see in real time where everyone is on the Canva whiteboard. You will also notice people's little icons up at the top. So I'm gonna come over to my Pocketful primary and I'm gonna shrink it just a little bit. You will notice that the links is right up here. If I click on that, I can then follow them. So whatever they do, it's gonna kind of follow them on my screen. So I'm gonna come back over to this one and we'll resize it a little bit more. So as I maybe scroll up and select like this rectangle, you'll notice it's automatically moving on the other side. So that's a really, really cool feature for students to be able to maybe follow along with what you're doing on the whiteboard. Now, as with most things, there are some limitations. If you give students edit access to the whiteboard, they can edit any part of it. So for example, I as Pocketful Primary inserted this rectangle. From the Emerson's account, I can go in and delete it. I can choose this sticky note, and even though it has Michelle Emerson's name, I can type on it. So you wanna make sure that you set boundaries with your students, set expectations. Now, as the owner of the whiteboard, you can go in and change the edit access at any time. So for example, from my Pocketful primary account, which is the owner, I can click share. I can choose the Emerson's 2020, and I can switch it from can edit to can view and revoke that edit access. I can also go to anyone with the link and change it to can view then those changes have saved and now I'm not gonna be able to go in and make changes. I'm gonna reload the page. I can now view it, but I'm not able to click and be able to edit any of the elements that are on it. One last thing I do wanna highlight is the fact that you can export your whiteboard as an image or a PDF file, just like you can with other Canva files. However, some of the file types are gonna be limited. So for example, you're not able to export a Canva whiteboard as a video file or as a PowerPoint. So from that share button, if you come down to download and choose file type, you can export it as a JPEG, a PNG, PDF standard or PDF print, you're not gonna be able to export it as a video or a GIF. But with, for example, PDF print, you have some options just like normal, and then you can just click download, it will save it as a PDF. And a really cool feature is maybe only part of the whiteboard is really relevant. You can click and drag in order to select the part of the whiteboard you want to export. And then you can right click, choose download selection. It will bring back up that window, but you'll notice it has selected just those elements that are going to export as an image or a PDF. That is it. Those are the basics for using Canva whiteboard. If you have any questions, I'm not an expert, but I'll help you out if you can. Just leave a comment down below. Equally handsome equally smart. Also check out the description box for the link to my playlist with all of the Canva videos from my channel for really easy access. There's lots of Canva hack videos on there and some other tutorials. If you did find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you do not miss any future videos. As always, thank you for watching. I love you so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one.